Hey guys, this video is a response to a video I had posted roughly a year or so ago uh, to an interview that Phil Vischer, the creator of uh, Big Ideas, which is the uh, brainchild between of the VeggieTales, uh, and he had, and where he was dealing with um, how Christians in the media need to be dealing with the LGBTQ plus issues. And I responded uh, with a uh, very quickly made video. Uh, I posted it, forgot about it completely, didn't, didn't even check. I mean, just I, mean, I might check the first day or so, but just just left it. And I think six or seven so months later, I actually checked it because I was going to start going. I had now more time, so I was going to start posting some more videos. And wow, I got some comments, way more than normal. Uh, 99% negative as far as their reaction to my video was not very positive. And I didn't at the time respond to any of them. I haven't responded to any of them personally. Uh, but I feel like now I want to make it because there's so many comments and there's just a, a, kind of a wide range of uh, responses that need. It'd be easier just to make a video and link it too. So I'll have the video link below. You're welcome to watch it if you want to. I'm going to disable the comments. Just go like all the comments can be here. We have a dialogue, hopefully, uh, with uh, a good healthy dialogue down here. So I spent some time praying, searching my soul, making sure I am responding in kindness and love uh, as best as I can do, both biblically speaking as much as I can speak from a biblical standpoint, that's what I want to do. That's where I believe, and I want to give that response here, um, with as much um, grace and love as um, as I believe I can in this. And anyway, with kindness, I'm truly trying to seek to understand, not just to be understood. And clearly, I'm doing this to be have my opinion out there. But I really, truly want to respond to the comments. And we'll go through. And so what I've done, or we'll do after I film this, is in the comment section below, I will break this section out into several parts. So if you want to, you can go down there right now and click. That way you don't have to listen to me all the way through. Uh, you're welcome to do that um, as well. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, here is overview of the issue. So I can sum, summarize, summarize it uh, really quickly for you. My position is that LGBTQ issues is much more of an adult conversation than a children's conversation. Obviously, adults can do what they want, and everyone has, should have the right and freedom to go ahead and express it, as long as it doesn't trample on somebody else's right. So Netflix is certainly with it, well within their rights to have a channel dedicated just to the um, LGBTQ um, demographics. I mean, it makes business sense to do that, and I have no problem doing it. Um, if they want to cater to a Christian or uh, a Muslim, again, they can cater to whoever they want. Why? Because I can selectively not do it if I don't want to, and vice versa. You have choices. Children, however, especially in children's programming, a child is not going to have the cognitive ability to understand what's coming through and go, wait a minute, this is a controversial subject uh, I need to ask questions about. They're just going to receive the information and absorb it and then take it in, okay? Um, that's where I draw the line. As a parent, I was trying to make the claim that um, I don't like being surprised, and I think a lot of Christians are the same way. They don't like being surprised when you put on some kid programming and what you're thinking is, okay, they're learning good, basic information. They're the ABCs are one, two, threes. They're learning uh, how to be nice and kind and so forth and so on. But then they're, then they're introduced to a much broader world of topics that a vast majority of the people still feel this is sensitive information that a parent should have the right, the first right, to have a conversation uh, with. And... The, 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 the key for me is the surprise. Not knowing that something's come down the pike and it just being sprung on you, I, you, know, you know, I don't want to have to have that dialogue on the spot 
with somebody and you know at some point you're as parents we're going to talk about all these issues and that's a good thing we need to talk through this and and help our kids to process a lot of information the surprise part is really where you see my reaction in the first video is surprise it's coming from all these angles and at minimum i feel we should have warning labels um, saying, hey, this deals with a more sensitive subject matter. Um, at the minimum, you know, when we watch a movie, it, I get R, PG-13, so forth. And then even better is when they break down so these contain these sections of, of, you know, this contains violence and language and so forth, terrorism, you know, there's a bunch of little tags, right? And I think that's helpful so that the parent can make a, a educated decision do I want my children watching or looking at such as this? I'm not making the claim. Please hear this out. I'm not making the claim that the community, the LGBTQ plus community, should not have the right or the freedom to express their views. I think we still live in America where you should have a right to express the views. I'm not a fan of, quote, cancel culture, where... We can't have this dialogue back and forth, back and forth. You express your view, I express my view. Hopefully we all do it in love and kindness. Hopefully, right? And I'm trying my best, as hopefully you can see, to do that. Um, and so I'm, I'm okay with the expression. What I don't want is to have... Uh, there needs to be some safeguards in place to allow me as a parent who am trying to raise my kids in a certain way. And again, this is my kids and I want to, this is how I want them to grow up. And you can have your kids and you can teach them however you want. That's good, that's parenting, right? Parenting. But there needs to be some safeguards in place. That's my opinion. And that's what I'm you know, making the argument here is we should have those safeguards in place for it. That is kind of the crux of why I made the video in the first place. May have not done the perfect way the first time. Here's my attempt to to clear the air. All right. Okay, this section I kind of labeled. Um, am I angry? Was I raging? Was I mean? And was I unloving? Here's some comments people made. Uh, the toaster, that's your handle, said, How is this spreading the love of Jesus? I admire this man's devotion for sharing what he believes is right, but I think there's a much more Christ-like way to do it than berating and shaming people. Looney, that's the handle, said, At least Phil addressed this issue with much nicer. He wasn't raging like you. Uh, Robert Burns says, You are an intolerant man, in, a intolerant man, okay, who doesn't understand God. And Alpha Zoo, you made this, and here's what I want to talk to you. This is my last one. It says, as for calling trans people freaks, I would like to tell you your opinion is effing bull, uh, bull, okay. So, and so let me, let me address this one. One, I think I probably could have said it a little sweeter and a little nicer. I will concede with that. I will. I will actually say that I want my responses, and this is after uh, hours of introspection and thinking through the process and saying, hey, you know what? I'm not trying to cause enemies. I'm not trying to create a wall. I really do want to come to a good amicable decision. Um, and so, um, you know, you know, my response was, again, was, was a knee-jerk response initially. So here's my thinking through response and saying, I'm not raging. Um, was I angry? And I think these are issues that we need to talk about. Absolutely. Uh, I don't feel like I'm raging. I didn't feel like I was raging in the last comment either, uh, but I'm trying to seek to understand here. Was I mean? Um, I guess if telling my truth, as I see, is mean, I guess that would be a mean. Um, but I was still trying to say what's truth. Um, as for calling trans people freaks, it's actually a misrepresentation there. Just want to say, reread the, rewatch the video. I didn't call any trans or any even LGBTQ at all freaks. What I said was that the way a, here it is. Um, 
Going into a public lottery, this is me talking, so going into a public lottery dressing like a freak, you look ridiculous, you look stupid. Now, reading that, the way that sounds, does sound harsh. And that's just my opinion. It's my opinion. I wasn't calling them personally freaks. I was saying how they were dressed looked ridiculous. And that's my opinion. We all have opinions on people about how they dress. I mean, you can walk down the street and say they look ridiculous. And that's what I was saying. They look ridiculous. And that's my opinion. Okay? I'm not personally attacking them or their belief structure in that statement. I was saying what they were dressed like. So I'm not saying that I'm not trying to go mean. I'm not trying to be angry at anybody. I'm actually seeking to understand people in their positions. And like every other human on this planet, we all have emotions and we all have feelings. And sometimes we get excited and sometimes we don't. I got excited and I got passionate about that one. And though I still think those of the public library, that, 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 that case, um, they looked ridiculous. Notice I didn't call them any names. I'm saying what they were wearing. Please understand, I'm, English, I'm trying to be very articulate. What they were wearing, in my opinion, looked ridiculous. I wouldn't wear it. I would say they wore it. They feel comfortable in it. So be it. I'm just making the obvious statement from my perspective. And I know plenty of people who agree with that statement. And I'm sure there's other people who disagree with it. I'm sure. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to be mean or unloving or unkind to anybody. Hopefully I've expressed this in this video so far, that position. So, all right. In this section, which I call, I'm kind of calling, can we all just get along? Here's a few comments that I'm going to reply to. Uh, Kester Hostlet uh, said, you need to stop thinking that the whole LGBTQ plus community is trying to infect your children with our ways. We just want to get along like everybody else does. He also, uh, Kester also made the statement, I wouldn't want you to miss out on a Christian-based show by saying, but saying, it should be taken off air, and I'm sure you wouldn't want for me and my gay little shows either. I think I made that, I answered that one earlier. One, Jupiter W, w Jupiter W says we deserve rights. So let me stop there and um, um, answer those two, two things first. One, I don't believe, once again, that the entire LGBTQ2 plus community is out to get the Christians. I believe, like in any type of ideology, you know, Christian beliefs and whatever beliefs, you have your core and then you have your, uh, your, your fringe on the outside. And fringe, just, I'm just meaning people on the outside who, on the outside, they're the... the you know, the, the targeted ones. And the other group that just, just want to, like, he... Um, uh, Jupiter, uh, Kester said, you know, just want to get along. Let me, let me do me and you do you and whatever. And to some degree, I'm actually okay with that one. That's, that's going to be healthy peace. The Bible says as much as you can live with in peace, do so. I'm, I'm agreeing. It, what you want to do by yourself <clears throat> or with your people, your friends, go for it. And I don't think anyone's disagreeing. I won't have the right to be able to go do my, my things and express my, my beliefs and I expect, I say you, you have the right to do so on your terms. Absolutely. And do I think that every LGBT person is out to infect us? No. I, I don't think I would ever make that claim. Nor would I think that every Christian's out to save you. And we just, you know what? You believe what you don't believe. I believe what I believe. I mean, if we were to talk about Christianity, let's talk about it. Absolutely. Obviously, I believe firmly in my position. And you're welcome to ask me why. Otherwise, go do your thing. You you, you don't. Everyone can live with the consequences of their own life. That's kind of how I feel. So to, to you two guys, you absolutely deserve rights. Absolutely. I completely agree. And uh, you're welcome to, to do and produce anything you want. Again, I said this before. Um, everyone has a right to do it as long as you don't trample somebody else's right. Right? You know, you, know what, you, don't, you have a right to um, do a bunch of things because you don't have a right to murder because it, it usurps somebody else's rights. You know, so no murder's wrong. Um, you know, there's, you know, yeah. Okay. Um, Alpha Alpha Zulu, I think that it is, um, said, 
Um, also, who really is normal? There are little there are little things called individuality that are so important making up who you are. It's not a bad thing to be different. And I'll say, hey, you're right. It's not a bad thing necessarily to be different. I do that want to challenge you in the word normal. Um, as I see it, I kind of looked up the dictionary just to confirm I wasn't crazy. Normal is a conforming to a standard, usual, typical, or expected. So if I want to use that definition, with that's a, I think it's Webster online. By that definition, LGBTQ issues are not normal. And the, hey, now here's what I mean by that one. Now don't get offense. Don't take offense. Well, I want to explain my position here. So I want to look up some statistics. So I went to UCLA, definitely not a Christian university, but any stretch of my imagination. I went to their own school of law and, and I'll leave a link in the description so you can actually see the stats for all yourself. It says that um, based upon the American population, those that identify as LGB were 3.5% of the population. Those who identified as transgender were 0.3. So if we go normal is what is typical or average over the mean of everything, then certainly 3.5 is a lot less than the typical or the normal. Now, if you didn't watch my first video, I used the word several times. Um, a lot of the executive producers are trying to make LGBTQ issues. They, they, want, they want to make it normalized. It's like, this is typical. This is normal. There's nothing wrong with it. My position was that if only 3.5 of the population it identifies as LGB, and I would grant it that this is not the end all of all statistics out there. There might be other statistics that say it's a little bit higher, but we're just using one statistic here. Then clearly the other 96.5, and I'll just guess fake 96, so we can put the transgender numbers in there. 96, 95% of the population doesn't identify that as a typical normal position. And that's where I was coming from that i'm using statistics here to show that i'm not saying that the lgbt cannot have their views i'm not saying that at all i'm saying if we presenting um uh, gay marriage as just typical normal every day i want to say that's not typical normal. most people in america don't identify as gay and typically if they get married they get married to someone of the other sex that is normal that's normal. And remember i'm trying to come to this from a biblical perspective from for sort from the bible uh and i'll get to i'm gonna get to this later but from the bible it, it does not say that so it says one man and one woman and so that from my viewpoint is what is normal and um there is a very big push and has been for a long time to make all the LGBTQ issues a very standardized and normal thing, especially when it comes in now and it comes in the programming of our kids, which is why I'm making this to say, I think we need some safeguards for those who don't feel that that's typical or normal um, to allow us the right to say, no, I don't, I don't want my kids watching that. So, all right, there you have that. All right, this section um, I called the just to show up and sit down kind of comments. I'm just gonna, it's gonna be a quick one. I, just, I do want to address two people. One was Brian F. Hughes Richardson, who says nobody attacked the quote Christian community the way the Christian community has attacked numerous others. My suggestion would be to quit playing victims and live big caps here your own life. Um, out how you see fit for you. And then the other person, uh, I think it's JX Green, says, if I ever see you, you are getting another black guy. Huh. Well, let me address that one. One, my lighting was pretty bad on the last one. And it did look like, it did look like my eyes were, you know, black. Under, I have, you know, they're normally darker. That's just a genetic thing. We've actually been to the doctor about it. It's a genetic thing. So I've even used cream to kind of lighten up, not now, but in the past I have. Um, so, but as far as getting another black eye, 
I'm going to go ahead and, go ahead and pass with that one. You're welcome to see somebody else on that. No, thank you. You're welcome to, yeah, okay. Um, as far as Brian's comment, when, from my perspective, programming is, is put and you don't know what's coming out when, you, when it comes towards your kids, you do feel, from a Christian's perspective, that you're being sucker punched. I'm seeking to, under, seeking to express it so you understand. From a Christian, it feels like you are sucker punched because you're watching it and all of a sudden you get, whoa, I'm not ready to talk to my kids about these issues and you're presenting it and I didn't know you presented it. To me, that's, quote, an attack. So from this position, yeah, it feels like you're well, more the victim on this one. Okay, A, this is my truth, right? If I want to use that kind of phrase, it's my truth. We do feel like the victim. We do feel like, you know, unless we are um, involved in the conversation and then you want to sit there and present it, it feels like we're being sucker punched in it. Again, I've addressed this earlier, but I don't think every LGBT person, LGBTQ person is out to get every Christian. No, but I'm not naive enough to think that there is not an agenda to make that lifestyle look just totally normal, uh, and I've addressed this in a, in earlier, totally just, it's no big deal, it's no big deal, when a lot of Christians believe it is a big deal, and worth a lot more dialogue, and um, yeah, so yeah, we do feel attacked. You don't have to agree with me on that, but we do feel like we're being attacked on that one, because we have a different value system, and every time we try to express the values as much as loving as possible as we can, we feel like, again, this is a feeling, we feel like we're being shot down. And I don't think it's unjustified a lot. I think a lot of times it is. A, for instance, this is just, just put this out. I make a video. Granted, it wasn't always perfectly said, but it got a lot of negative response. Who was being attacked? Well, I would feel like we, I was being attacked from it because I had a position that someone else disagreed with until the case where J. X. Green says he wants to punch me in the or give me another black eye. Why? Because I have an opinion? I can't have an opinion? Um, no, I think we should be allowed to have an opinion. This still is America. We should have an opinion, right? And I'm trying right now with this video to express it in a kind, love way, still saying the truth, but without... And maybe not, not as much sarcasm as I may have dealt with it initially um, because I'm not trying to harm anyone. I'm trying to express my viewpoint uh, on this issue. Okay, this section um, is called Bible and Gay. And I want to address the, the issue of can you be gay and Christian at the same time. So here's some comments. Robert Burns, Burns with a very angry face icon says, the Bible says, love thy neighbor. God made us in image. God loves everyone. Um, uh, ALZ Mary Wolf says, just a remind, reminder that the Bible isn't against homosexuality. That line was translated improperly and was meant to be about pedophilia and quote, a man shall not lie with a boy, unquote. Uh, same person goes in and looks like they quote Leviticus 18.22, although I didn't quite understand whether you were saying that was a good verse or a bad verse against it. I think your position was, it just simply says it's detestable, not necessarily, it, it just simply means it was, it, they disliked it back then. So I think that's your position. Uh, Alexander Leland Kane, K-C-A-Y-N-E, says, quote, it's your choice, unquote. No, it's not, dummy. I never choose to be attracted to men. Emo Frog says, Man has been surrounded by heterosexual meaning my whole bank life, and that SHIT never made me straight. And then you repeat that comment elsewhere, just a little bit more. Same one. So, one, um, uh, Robert Burns, yep, God does want us to love our neighbor. Love thy neighbor, absolutely. Golden rule. Uh, God doesn't get God did made man in his own image and God does love everyone. So I'm agreeing with you on that. Absolutely. Totally true. I think the we have a def, maybe a different definition of what the word love is. Uh, the Bible actually spells out what love is and and then differentiates 
differenti differentiates, I'm differs between what love and lust is. And biblically speaking, we make this distinction between the two. And I think sometimes culturally, we swap things out where we interchange love with lust and vice versa. Um, so, um, also make the point that just because you love someone doesn't mean you always accept their behavior or approve of their beliefs. I can love someone and not agree with them. Biblically speaking, I can do that. I, if I disagree with somebody, it doesn't mean I just, I hate them. I, I don't make that, that leap right there. I can love somebody because love from a Christian perspective is a verb. It's an action. It's what I do, not just a feeling. Love, as a matter of fact, biblically speaking, love is way more than a feeling. I can love my wife and at the same time not having strong feelings at the moment for her. And because sometimes your spouse just gets on your nerves. I'm sure I get on her nerves from time to time. But it doesn't mean I still don't love her. I sometimes just don't like her at the moment. Okay? So I make that decision, uh, this, this, you know, the distinction. So let me talk about a few of the Bible verses in, in the Old Testament and the New Testament that address the homosexual issue. And this is my view on it. So there's two key verses or key passages of scripture. And what was it? Uh, ALZ, Mario Wolf kind of re referenced both of these. One, they're both, the first ones are both found um, in Leviticus. Well, first of all, in Genesis, um, in the beginning of Genesis, was it Genesis 2, 24, God makes it, scripture makes it specific, a union between a man and a woman. So it kind of sets a precedent in the very beginning. Uh, it's a man and a woman. Jesus reaffirms it later on in the book of Matthew. Paul reaffirms it again later in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 5, 31, um, where it again, three different times reaffirms marriage is between a husband and a wife. The union is between one man and one woman. So there's already, and, and no other one is mentioned. So that's, you know, that's right, right there. Um, also in Mark and in several of the epistles of Paul, they go out of their way to say that any sexual activity outside of that union of a man and a woman uh, is prohibited. I mean, they go out of their way. It's not just a little bit. They actually go out of their way. So anyway, two verses in the Old Testament talk about. One is found in Leviticus chapter 18. The other is found in two chapters later, Leviticus 20. Um, I know um, you, you she, uh, uh, ALZ, Mario, Wolf, you quote it. 1822 because that's the one that specifically says about it but if you read the entire chapter it's talking about various sexual activities so this is like a whole sex chapter of the do's and the don'ts and, the, and and whatnot verse 22 is the one that talks about sexuality a man shouldn't lie with a, another man as unto a woman verse 29 though is interesting because i don't want you to skip number 29 because 29 is sort of the the pre period at the end of this long-winded section here and it says this everyone who does any of these detestable things and clearly 22 references the word detestable such persons must be cut off from their people so it lumps all those sexualities including homosexuality in with that one but, but uh, chapter 20 is really the one that um is a little more poignant more it's hard to get around and there you start, start with verse 10, and it starts talking about some sexual acts that are, that are, that are not approved. Verse 13 is, is one we're going to drill into. It says, if a man has sexual relations with a man, as one does with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. Here's the harsh part. They are to be put to death. Their blood will be on their own hands. Now, it doesn't use the word homosexual. You're absolutely right. It doesn't say pedophilia in there at all. The Hebrew is pretty specific, a man with a man, as unto, as just like you would with a woman. That's, uh, we interpret that as a homosexual behavior. Um, there's no good way of trying to redefine that one um, to say that the Bible supports it. Clearly the Old Testament does not, it spells it out 
I mean, it, in pretty good detail. So, but let's jump to the New Testament and say, well, does Jesus or the Apostle Paul, does the New Covenant um, do away with this and say, well, it's now acceptable? Well, there's three main passages that support uh, the Old Testament, and that's Romans 1, 24 through 32, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, and 1 Timothy 1, 10. And in the, the latter two, the, the Corinthians and the Timothy one, Paul, for the word homosexual, Paul actually makes up a word. It's not used beforehand, and it might be used a little bit, a few times afterwards. That I actually don't know. Um, but he actually makes up a word for homosexual. It's two words. It's a compound word. The first one's arson, which means man. And the other one is kaiot. I'm not a Greek guy, so don't hold me to that. K-O-I-T-E. Uh, or depending on the, the, the prefix at the end, it could be an S or an A or I, I depending on the, uh, how you conjugate it, right? That just simply means bed. And it has always been translated homosexuality. And here's the interesting part about that. Those two Greek words are the identical Greek words that the Greek Septuagint uses in Leviticus. Now, for a little quick, the Greek Septuagint is the Greek version of the Hebrew Old Testament. So the Hebrew Old Testament, they rewrote it in uh, ancient Greek, um, usually between 300 to 100 years prior to Jesus even being born. So this was around in Paul's days, clearly. And that's a Greek version. So it's, it's like the common language for the people. So Paul, writing the epistles in Corinthians and Timothy, would have definitely access to the Septuagint. And in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13, those two words are used side by side. The arson and the K-O-I-T-E are used side by side. To mean, I mean, here we have a clearly defined what homosexual act is. And Paul is just using a new made up word to understand and reference. There's a clear reference back to it. So in my interpretation... In my understanding of the scripture, it would be very hard to intellectually leap over these six passageways, not just verses, but passageways that the Bible goes out of their, its way. Um, and then there's other passages that's, that use the words like, and any other acts and stuff like that, um, that re reference anything outside of marriage, so, you know, fornication, adultery, and, and, and for the record, um, the Bible doesn't just pinpoint homosexuality uh, acts as uh, wrong. It says any act outside of the bed of marriage is wrong. Fornication, adultery, you name it, bestiality, all those fall under that category. So the Bible doesn't actually just single this one out. Uh, we're singling out for the conversation um, of it. So in my opinion... Um, Biblically speaking, there's not a good argument, and there's no reference, and I've looked it up, no reference to say the New Testament, mistranslate that. That is clearly a modern, we're going to reinterpret a word that everyone for the last 2,000 years has accepted meaning homosexuality. Everyone. And it has a pretty, pretty clear line to go back to it. So you have to change the meaning of the word. To make it mean with you, but even if you did that, I'll just let you just say you could do that. Even if you did that, you still have the Old Testament, which is, I mean, it, it, it really clearly does say if a man and a man have sex like like they do with a female. So I don't know how we get around that. So um, I want to talk about the "I was born that way" argument. Um, you know, because that comes up a little bit, and I know, uh, what is it, Emo, no, Alexander Leland, Kane says, I have no choice, I was basically born that way, so I do want to talk about that for a little bit, one, there is no current scientific literature out there that I'm aware of that's, that, that makes any kind of you know, empirical proof that there is a nature cause, a sort of biological determination um, argument that because I have something born in my born um, there, 
I'm automatically predisposed to this way. So one, I would say there's no, there's no, there's no literature out there, strong supportive, you know, double blinded, tested, that kind of thing, literature out there. It's just not there. Um, I'm not saying that this science won't find something like that. I'm saying that um, my, my argument is just simply the literature's not out there. None that I can find. And if you want to find me an article, um, by all means, click an article. I can look it over. I've already tried to find some. I don't, uh, you know, the ones that I could find were easily debunked. Um, so the second thing is, uh, let's say there is, I'm, gonna play the, I'm just going to play the argument. Let's say there is some kind of um, biological, um, you know, uh, something in me that's predisposed um, to, to do this, um, to do that. I believe people have choices. I believe we all have choices. If someone, if they ever came up with a gene and say, well, you're predisposed to um, like chocolate. It doesn't mean I have to put chocolate in my mouth. It doesn't mean I have to, to eat it. It might make it harder, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean you don't have a choice. The beautiful thing about um, Christianity is God gives you choices. Choices, choices, choices. I believe we have choices. I don't believe anyone is born um, with it. Now, I know I'm saying this from the comfort of I know who I am, but there are plenty of people, and I do mean plenty, who have felt that way, had no choice, but came to know Jesus Christ and realized I actually do have a choice. There's two, two great videos I will put a link at the bottom to, and they are interviews of people who are former LGBTQ who um, changed their choice and said, I thought, well, I don't remember, but one just off the top of my head, uh, he's like, yeah, I, I thought I was born this way. And then he came, I'm obviously paraphrasing, please watch the video. Um, and I came to know Jesus and Jesus gave me a choice. He gave me a choice to accept or reject. That's the beautiful thing. Uh, about the Bible is no matter how we think we're born, let's play, let's play it this way. Let's say they found a gay gene. Um, that doesn't mean that that doesn't usurp what God does. He comes and lets you be born again. That's the salvation message of Christianity is you don't have to be the way you were born. Okay, let, let's just take the word gay out for a second and put some, uh, something else in uh, let's just use alcoholism because we all agree that drinking too much in excess can really harm your body. I think that's pretty solid. Um, so um, just because you're predisposed to drink alcohol doesn't mean that God can't change you around so that you no longer want to drink and be, can become sober. And also, doesn't mean, like for instance, my grandma, uh, my father's mother, um, she used to... Um, smoke and and do a lot of whatever stuff non-christian stuff and uh when she was saved god completely delivered her from her um, need to have alcohol that's pretty cool uh, a friend of mine uh, again before coming to the lord did a lot of drugs um smoked a lot and when he came to the Christ, he was delivered from that addiction of drugs right there. Now, he worked through the smoking addiction, and he had to, had to daily say, no, I'm not going to smoke, no, I'm not going to smoke, no, I'm not going to smoke. Until now, he's well past the need to smoke. Uh, every now and then, he feels it, but he says, no, I'm not going to smoke. God gives us choices. Um, and let's say that we, we found the gay gene. And says, you know what? You're more just you're more likely to be a gay, to be attracted to the same sex than another person would be. That doesn't mean that the Bible still doesn't say um, you must be born again. And then there are certain um, actions that the Bible wants us to adhere to. And for some people, that could simply mean that God wants you um, would deliver you completely, take the desires away from you. And you, uh, you know, you either live sim singly as a single or you get married and enjoy the benefits of that marriage. Or that might mean God wants you to be celibate and live a chaste life. 
um, that's pleasing unto the Lord. Um, but you have choices. I'm here to say that. You have choices. You don't have to be gay if you don't want to. I think there is a level where um, we can convince ourselves that we don't have a choice because we don't want to not have a choice. But even if this, and I know there's some examples of people who feel like they, um, uh, you know, they could not stop thinking about it or, or, or having those feelings and impulses and they didn't want it, they didn't want it. And then finally they just gave in to them. That's where the power of God comes in. Um, because Christianity is not about a bless me culture. It's not about a feel good. It's not just about getting into heaven or not going to hell. It's not, those are, those are secondary to God changing us and helping us become our true self. God changes us. That's the beauty of Christianity is he's able to take, um, what was a mess in our lives before, um, and churn us around. I know personally I was headed down a terrible path and God stopped me and turned me around. I'm not saying I'm anywhere near perfect. Good Lord, I'm not. I have plenty of flaws. But God's helping me with that. And I'm getting better and better and better. I make a lot less of those things, mistakes, little mistakes than I ever did. And that is a great thing. And so I want to encourage you guys. You have a choice. You have a choice.